Snowflake, Snowflake, Snowflake. Why does it feel like every company needs to compare themselves to Snowflake in the data space? If you're on the startup side, like Firebolt DB, you're telling everyone why you're a better data warehouse. If you're on the larger side, like Palantir, well, it feels like every fifth question asked is about how you compete with Snowflake. And the question becomes, why are all these companies obsessed with Snowflake? Snowflake is like the Graham Stephan or Meet Kevin of the data tools world. It has the most clout. Arguably, it doesn't even have the largest market share, supposedly sitting somewhere around 12 to 13%, but yet it feels like every other tool is either competing with it or trying to partner with it. And the question becomes, why? Why is Snowflake so dominant? In order to understand why Snowflake is so dominant, we need to go back in the Wayback Machine to kind of see what were the before times like? What was it like in the dark ages of data and why we have all run so quickly? to Snowflake. So let's jump on this journey with me to see why is it that Snowflake is dominating the data world? Hmm. Oh, this one. So in order to understand what the world was like before tools like Snowflake or even Redshift, we need to think about, well, the fact that there was really no cloud, at least not in the way we understand it today. Before, if a finance team or any team, operational or otherwise, wanted to report on some sort of KPI or do any form of analysis. And if that all required some sort of data warehouse, they would need to go to IT and figure out one, were there any servers available that could have space where they could put some form of data warehouse. More than likely, if there wasn't space, they'd have to go to procurement and procure a whole new server just for their data warehouse all of which could likely take months as procurement might have their own process. And then you'd have to talk to some sort of a supplier of servers and just on and on where a simple request as spinning up a data warehouse for reporting could take months. And that would just be to get the physical server and then even more time to build it. This was the before times. This was before you could just click a button and spin up a data warehouse instantaneously. In addition, data was starting to grow at a very rapid rate meaning you had a much harder time predicting how much space you actually required for your reporting. And more than likely, your systems couldn't actually process the data fast enough in order to provide analytics quickly. And that is where a lot of cloud as well as more distributed systems started to jump into play. Let's focus this next era on Redshift. There are arguably a few other tools that people are using at this time, as BigQuery was also kind of uh, making its rise. But I really wanted to focus on Redshift because I think that's still a very popular solution to this day. And personally, this was the era that I was introduced to the world of data, especially around data management. Redshift at this point was arguably, as uh, an article that I pulled back from 2013 TechCrunch a decade ago, at this point, Amazon Redshift was disrupting the market. It was taking what was once calculated somewhere in the range of like a 19 to $25,000 per terabyte of data warehousing solution and turning it into less than a thousand. You no longer had to wait for procurement to get you servers. And in addition, if you need to scale up, there were easier options, I say easier with quotes, to scale up your processing. All of this made Redshift a very popular option, but there were a few clunky things about Redshift. And this is kind of why I call this era, the almost dark ages of data and data engineering, because a lot of us just put up with complexity because they were arguably better than the current on-prem solutions, but they did make our lives harder. You know, Redshift had a ton of clunky things about it. Like for example, if you wanted to do some sort of merge or basically what they call upsert statement, unlike in other data warehouses or database systems where you could just do this with a clause that actually allowed you to merge, you would instead need three different tables, a piece of gum, a rubber band, and several other random components just to do something like a basic slowly changing dimension. And that's just one of many idiosyncrasies that Redshift had that made it a little more clunky than your standard data warehouse. And the other options at the time weren't arguably that much better. You know, BigQuery decided to make their own SQL and eventually had to kind of go back on that whole decision and Hadoop, which again, isn't necessarily a data warehouse on its own, but if you wanted to do some data processing on it, you know, would often require you to write code in Java or something other than SQL, at least at the time, you know, Hive and Presto were not made at this point. So 
everything was kind of clunky in terms of either using something like cloud-based, whether it was BigQuery or Redshift, or if you wanted to use something like Hadoop, you'd have to like spin it up yourself and manage it. Eventually solutions like Hortonworks came out and so you could kind of do Hadoop as a managed service. But overall, a lot of the options that we had weren't exactly what we needed. And the truth is we put up with it. We spent a ton of time learning about the different types of nodes that Hadoop has. We spent a ton of time figuring out how to set up keys on Amazon Redshift. And we all had to relearn a ton of things that we had been doing for a long time in classic data warehousing. And then one day, a light shined from heaven. That's all I can say. And that light was named Snowflake. Now, the thing about Snowflake is it did a lot of things really well when it came onto the market. And the first thing being its virtual data warehouse. Snowflake did a lot of things well when it came to market. In particular, one, obviously it offered a product that was very helpful. It was kind of a virtual data warehouse where it separated storage and compute, and you no longer had to pre-allocate the exact size of storage and how it was gonna be correlated with the amount of compute that you're gonna have. And instead, now these things could be separate instances where you could store, you know, you could store a small amount of data, you could store a big amount of data, you could run on what they call small or an extra large very easily with just a click of a dropdown, all of which meant you didn't have to resize your data warehouse and you were just going to pay for exactly what you used and you wouldn't have to spend time migrating in case of resizing. In addition, you could do things like uh, merge statements and other things that are very classic in data warehouses. So people who were classic data warehouse developers didn't have to feel like they were figuring out some new thing for the 10th time. And not only did they develop a solid product, but their marketing and their sales were on point. Perhaps this was from their Oracle days or something of that nature, but unlike I think many other companies that are kind of in the space today of data, they just kind of knew how to solve this problem and their marketing and sales was solid. In fact, I recall, I think back in 2015, when I was first introduced to Snowflake, I went to one of those conferences or talks and I thought it was supposed to be again, a general talk about learning about virtual data warehouses. And it all ended up being a sales pitch for Snowflake. But by the end of it, I didn't feel like I was sold until the very end at, for something. So I think that was something that was interesting where they had a solid sales process. They had a great go-to-market strategy that was clearly adopted quickly. And there's a point that I don't think I've covered yet, which is the fact that Snowflake grew the pie. That is to say that they opened up the world of data to companies that were significantly smaller. In the old days, it might take a lot of time, a lot of expertise to develop something like a data warehouse, especially with tools like Redshift or BigQuery that were now, again, having to be relearned by a lot of data professionals, and in turn would be very expensive to develop, both from a people standpoint, as well as from a tool standpoint. Snowflake built a cloud data warehouse that was really easy to spin up, and that as long as you kind of understood standard SQL, you could build on it and you weren't gonna spend an arm and a leg to do it, both in terms of on people costs as well as in terms on tool cost. Of course, now we live in a world where Snowflake's average customer, I think is like $160,000 a year. So Snowflake costs have definitely gone up, but I still think they've opened up the world to data and data analytics to a much broader range of companies. And that's something that I'm seeing as a consultant in the data space every day as more and more companies of varying sizes are all asking for consultations and help in building their modern data stack. Snowflake came into a world that was primed and frustrated by the current options. Again, Redshift required a lot of finagling. Hadoop on its own was a little bit frustrating. You required like four services to keep it running and an expensive team of experts just to manage your various clusters. So when Snowflake came out and it was really almost as simple as just click and you have a fully functional data warehouse, people were all for it. Of course, now we are entering a new era. The previous area was more of the move to the cloud data warehouse, and that's what Snowflake sold itself as. But even Snowflake now is currently selling itself as a cloud data platform because it realizes that storing the data is just step one. Their recent $800 million acquisition of Streamlit, I think just continues to voice the fact that they are trying to push into a totally new strategy where they're not just the tool that stores your data, but they're the tool that you're going to rely on for your analytics and how you're going to actually operationalize the data. And again, there's tons of tools that are being stacked and built on top of Snowflake, things like reverse ETL tools like High Touch and Census, all whose focus is turning all this data into valuable operational insights. Things that are not just, again, dashboard numbers and KPIs, but 
things that are going back and integrating with other tools. And Snowflake is very aware that it needs to become much more than a data warehouse. It needs to be the tool, that cloud data platform that it's selling, that you rely on for, again, operationalizing your analytics. And I think Lauren kind of covered this a bit in her post on LinkedIn, where she referenced the fact that Snowflake is missing out on a lot of possible sales because people aren't fully utilizing a Snowflake and actually finding the true value of it, which is insights and operationalization of data. In order for Snowflake to increase the stickiness of their product, they need companies to actually do something with that data. The truth is data management and data engineering in general is kind of a boring subject. What is cool is the whole machine learning and ML ops section. That's what businesses want. They want actual value from their data and they don't just want to store it. And this is why in this next era and then this next decade, we're going to see if Snowflake can actually compete with all these companies that are coming up that are offering a lot more than just data storage. We're likely going to see a lot more acquisitions from Snowflake as it tries to kind of build this next layer on top of its data storage layer as it really tries to become that core data layer that everyone builds all of their data applications on top of. Currently in the SMB space, Snowflake is still arguably untouchable, but there is still a ton of opportunity in terms of creating value from data that Snowflake needs to jump on. And I'm super excited to see where it's going to go in the next few years, if it can compete in this next level, you know, just going beyond just being a classic kind of data warehouse, but in the cloud and helping people actually find value from data. What are your thoughts? Do you think Snowflake will be able to compete with things like Databricks or maybe Palantir, which have kind of different approaches to similar problems in this fast growing world of data and everyone who's trying to compete in it. Let me know your thoughts below. And other than that, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Goodbye.